Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to look at some of the most controversial but also some of the most spectacular ball python morphs available. My name is Will, I'm a zoologist, but more importantly I've been keeping ball pythons and other reptiles since I was about 10 years old. So we're going to take a look shortly, but if you do enjoy this video and you want to see more, please let me know what you'd like to see next and please do like and subscribe. Let's dive in. This blue-eyed leucistic ball python has a hidden secret. When I put him under a black light, you could see some markings. You could see a dorsal stripe and some faint markings on the sides. He also has eye stripes. As the snake ages, these markings may become a very pale yellow. That was pretty cool. It reminds me of when I used to look for scorpions using a, a UV light like that. And again, that was Kiri Molinaro, who's always got good information. So that was really cool. Uh, I've seen a few of these pied ball pythons with a smiley face on them. And what's interesting is that that's actually harder to breed than a regular pied or something else because um, it's what generally when you get specific odd looking markings like that, it's, um, it's called polygenic traits or it's called apolygenic traits, sorry. And it's kind of, it's a mix of genes and selective breeding that make this come together. So I guess another example that I can think of would probably be the Black Knight um, Leopard Gecko. I can never remember if it's Black Knight or Dark Knight. I think it's Black Knight, um, which again is through selective breeding. And that's not one of these traits where you can breed it and get 50% one and 50% the other. This is like you have to breed them together um, in a family line, in line breeding, basically. Everybody has heard of ball pythons, and this little guy right here is a baby ball python that literally hatched out this morning. And this happens to be a special ball python. This is a ball python that doesn't have scalation. Now the scales in the wild are actually like armor, right? They protect them from predators. In captivity, they don't have predators, so the scales aren't as needed. And believe it or not, this is a genetic mutation that you can actually reproduce more scaleless when you breed the scaleless head animal together. One in four, you will get a scaleless baby. And sure enough, this is a scaleless baby that just hatched out this morning along with its sibling right here. Look at how cute that little thing is. It's absolutely incredible. And again, completely scaleless, no scales whatsoever. And then this is a year old one right here. Absolutely wonderful animals. I mean, just so cute. It's weird how the scales change the color and pattern so much. I tell you what, that is absolutely adorable. So that was the late, great Brian Barcheck. Um, I know that there was at times controversy um, surrounding Brian Barcheck and some people didn't agree with everything he did. But I think you'd have to say overall he had a positive effect on the hobby. And I think that's the general consensus now. So that was really cool. I mean, getting twins in any animal is amazing. Um, what I would say is with ball pythons, there's not any concrete evidence that I'm aware of that some morphs will give you more twins than others. Um, but just because there isn't concrete scientific evidence, it doesn't mean that it's not possible. So if a breeder, an experienced breeder, tells you so, they, they could be right. Just because it's not proven doesn't mean it's not true. So that was a GHI Mojave um, ghost ball python, which is, well, ghost, you can say hypo or ghost, it's the same thing. I should say hypo, I think that's what most people say. But anyway, that's one of my favorite morphs, and that snake, when they go into shed in their, the blue phase, they look absolutely amazing. They do look like a ghost. <laughs> My scaleless snake just gave me the most intact shed that I've ever gotten from him, ever. Here it is in all of its glory. Look at that. For anyone who doesn't know, I have a scaleless snake. His name is Taz. He is a scaleless Okatee corn snake. Due to the fact that they don't have scales on like the top 
but half of them, they do have belly scales, which you can see here, but because they don't have scales, it's honestly like really hard to get a perfect shed for them because you can tell how like paper, paper thin this stuff is, it rips all the time. And so I hardly ever get a full shed from him. And today I got it. I just wanted to make sure and show you guys this shed because it is so unique and different from other snake sheds. It, like I said, has the belly scales, the ventral scales down here. And then the top half of it is just this like paper, paper thin. Just in case anybody asks, it is not, in my opinion, unethical to keep scaleless corn snakes or scaleless rat snakes. Scaleless corn snakes and scaleless rat snakes are found well into adulthood in the wild. So it's not like, say, a scaleless ball python or a scaleless silky bearded dragon. Those are typically not naturally occurring. It is always really important to know that any morph in the reptile keeping hobby is a genetic mutation. And my co-host Neptune the Chameleon and I talk about this in an episode on our podcast, The Wild Type Podcast. So feel free to check it out if you guys wanna know more about interesting morphs like this. So that was interesting. There was some good information in there. Um, me personally, the old argument that because something exists in nature, it's okay to breed it in captivity doesn't really hold up to scrutiny. If you have a a scaleless, a scaleless sorry snake in captivity, it really doesn't matter to that individual snake how it is for snakes out in the wild. It's in captivity. That's its life. That's how it's going to be. So, me personally, do I have any evidence that scaleless? Um, ball pythons and other scaleless snakes um, have a lower quality of life in captivity. No, I don't have any first-hand evidence of that. I just have this kind of gut feeling that I don't really like it. I don't like snakes without scales. I feel like it's a step too far. So Well, that was obviously real. I mean, Desert Ghost is amazing. That's one on the right. The second one was amazing. But actually, I've got to say, I do still prefer the first one. Let me know what you think in the comments. Just add a little something to that equation there. Um, monsoon is a recessive trait, so of course the Mojave snake would have to have one copy of it. It would have to be heterozygous for monsoon for that pairing to make a Mojave monsoon. Just bear it in mind. Again, I'm gonna to have to go with the first one. Let me know what you think. It really looked kind of like a Pompeii and something else. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what genes are in there. I'm pretty sure that was a, I think it was a Pompeii special. So Pompeii on its own, I think is a six gene combination. So that snake must have had you know, seven different genes going on all at the same time to produce that effect. It's pretty incredible. Um, not something I've produced myself, but I'd like to. Check it out. So this is really cool. So this is a spider ball python, but it's, which is really just a morph and it carries a gene called calico. This is what it's supposed to look like, but this is what this looks like. And it also has pastel. Pretty cool, right? Interesting, quick explanation there. That is a, uh, a YouTuber who I expect will be facing some controversy over the coming years, another polarizing character, but none of my business. Hey guys, this unboxing video upsets me. No, this is not my animal. And no, I do not support the unethical breeding of spider ball pythons. Yes, she's super gorgeous and looks very healthy, but as she ages, this could potentially change. Spider ball pythons are prone to neurological disorders that can ultimately kill them. This was my boy Crumb. He was a rescue off of Craigslist. 
what he's doing there is corkscrewing. This ultimately leads to them being unable to eat, drink, and even survive. So I want to hear your opinions. Are you for or against breeding spider ball pythons and why? Leave it in the comments. See that one? I mean, obviously the person is quite opinionated. They're saying they're against it, but I did quite like that because, you know, I never take the position where I'm going to tell you what to do. It's an, like I say, it's a moral question and whether you breed spider ball pythons is your own business. And I feel like at least there the person was saying, this is my opinion. What's your opinion? Let me know why, rather than just trying to shut people down, which is what we get a lot in this hobby. Well, we did it again. So I think Kiki is genetic stripe and clown with some that had some orange dream and yellow belly thrown in. Um, that was obviously from Aussie Boids. Aussie is a really smart guy, really smart businessman. He first produced the orange dream ball python. And that is just one of the like amazing morphs you can make with Orange Dream. If you haven't seen it, do look it up and uh, and have a quick look. Hey guys, what's going on? I wanted to share this clutch. Um, this is from a Super Orange Dream Yellow Belly Black Pastel Cypress Head Clown <clears throat> Red Twin Orange Dream and she Red Stripe Mojave Clown Female. It's a lot of interesting stuff going on in here. And it's going to be really difficult to identify these. So that was Aussie again. Um, again, one of the parents of those snakes was Super Orange Dream. Um, so all of those babies had Orange Dream. And I mean, they were really amazing looking snakes. But what I really like about that is that they've got this kind of subtle phased out pattern and these subtle colors. I mean, the orange is lovely, but I like the subtleness to it all. The different hues. I find that really interesting. Why you shouldn't buy a spider ball python. Neurological disorder such as stargazing. Intestinal disorders. Weight loss, respiratory infection, wait for the bubbles, therapies for all of this. Him being a good boy despite the stress. Please don't encourage the sales of these poor animals. So that was an odd one because um, there are there are issues to do with the spider ball python, but I've never seen one personally in real life that had that range of issues arising just from the gene. Um, I'd love to know what was on that Q-tip. Um, me personally, I don't know. I don't know how a respiratory infection could be related to that. So there may be, um, do we sometimes mix spider gene effects with husbandry issues or illnesses? I really don't know. In any case, if ever you have a snake that bubbles like that, the solution is to go to a vet. Once they get to that stage for a respiratory infection, they're going to need injectable antibiotics and they're going to need a vet who has the experience to tell you which antibiotic to use and the dosage. So there you have it. That was another interesting video. I've kind of shown you the good stuff and the bad stuff again. And really, I hope that it's just been fun, basically. <laughs> so if you did enjoy it, please do subscribe and please do comment. Please do let me know what you'd like to see next. And I'll be back as soon as I possibly can. Thank you very much.